everybody, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today's video is all about the makeover of the entryway in our home. This wall was initially wallpapered by the previous owner, so when we bought the house in 2020, we took the wallpaper down, but we painted it a very sad beige. We really didn't have the time to give it the makeover it deserves with all of our other home renovations, so here we are, two years, almost three years later. This video will give you guys an explanation of how we did this project, and if you want to recreate it in your own homes, feel free to send us photos. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more home renovation projects, and we hope you enjoy watching. Prior to starting on this project, we had to do a lot of planning because not only is this wall slightly unlevel because it's an older home but we have crown molding along the top of the ceiling and if we were to just butt the boards against it it would cast a weird shadow and just look unprofessional so we took a trip to Home Depot to get our supplies. As much as we would have loved to use pine for this project we opted to use MDF because it was what Home Depot had in stock and it was also slightly cheaper than pine. In total this project came out to roughly $500 Canadian. We fastened cove moldings to the top of the first piece with wood glue and brad nails and then began framing out the space. Another thing we had to keep in mind is the floor trim because we plan to continue this wall detailing down our hallway so we opted to use a wider piece of MDF at the height of the hallway trim so it would look uniform when we get to that project. A laser level was also really helpful with this installation, especially when it came to installing the vertical pieces. We added liquid nails to the back of each piece before brad nailing it in place and spaced ours 23 inches apart. As far as this entire design goes, we really wanted to do it to emphasize how big this wall is, which is funny watching this back now because this wall really doesn't look that big. But the sad beige wall had to go and this was a project I've always wanted to do. I remember touring the house for the first time and thinking how a board and batten wall would look so pretty here. But obviously we had more important renovations to do so this went on the back burner. The cost of a project like this could also be done for more or less depending on the size of your space and the length and width that you choose to do between the boards. And in total it only took us two to three days to complete this whole project. We love doing big home renovations and projects, but transforming your space doesn't always mean gutting a space or doing any sort of demo at all to make a really big impact in a room. This is the kind of project where mess is at a minimum, you don't need to worry about permits or taking things apart provided you own your space. It only uses a few tools and it's so satisfying when completed, it really elevates the room and we spend a lot of time at home, <laughs> so it can be very easy to grow sick of where you live. I think, especially after the pandemic, a lot of people started to feel that way, which is why we're always doing things to our house, little transformations, it doesn't always have to be big things, to help keep that spark alive and make you excited about where you live, especially in the colder months when you can't be outside enjoying your backyard or you know, going places all the time. We're also firm believers that if you don't like something about your space, either change it or find a way that you can live with it to, or learn to love it until you can change it. Nowadays, there are so many renter friendly DIY projects on the internet that there's guaranteed to be something for everyone. And I'm sure you could probably find a variation of this project that would be renter friendly. Even a peel and stick wallpaper in a similar pattern, that would be cool. Anyway, after the board and batten was installed, Andrew and I used wood filler to fill all the holes and then used a spackling compound on the joints to make the pieces flush and appear like one uniform piece, piece, oh my gosh, rather than multiple cuts. Once the wood filler dried, Andrew caulked the seams with paintable caulking and we prepared to paint. I should warn you, this was the longest part of this entire project. It took four hours to apply the caulking to the entire wall. The paint color we used for this wall is called White Goose Down by Seiko. It's the exact same color we actually used in our home office and it will be the same color I plan to use in the hallway when we do this project there. And I had shared on my Instagram story updates of this process and received several direct messages about why didn't we just paint the wall before installing the board and batten. And the short answer is because we didn't want to. We weren't sure if we were going to spray this area and we didn't have the paint yet, but painting it by hand only took an hour or two. It was actually really enjoyable, especially with a tiny roller. We're big fans of tiny rollers around here. While I have you here, as we're nearing the end of this video, I want to quickly say thank you so much if you watched our last video for 
the love and support I received on that video. I'm not gonna get into it because it's not quite renovation based, but we've grown a whole platform by sharing home renovation content. So there's a lot more to us than just surface level home stuff, but being vulnerable on the internet can be really tough. So I won't get into the details, but just thank you so much if you watched that video and you were kind, I really appreciate it. Anyway, here is the final reveal of this project. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more home renovation projects and we will see you in our next video. Bye.